Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, Good evening. I wanted to take a moment to uh, introduce Robert uh, and his students from Wentworth University who are here tonight with us. Uh, and uh, Robert, we I was planning a bamboo course with Robert before Bamboo U was going to happen. And then I tried to cancel the course because this kind of, you know, I got overtaken by, you know, larger interests. Uh, and then I realized we, we couldn't cancel the course and we figured out how to run two bamboo U's at the same time before we had ever uh, run a bamboo course at all. So that was the first one? That was the first bamboo U that I was involved in, yeah. Was there one before that? Uh, Green Camp had something called Bamboo U, but it was a very different kind of experience um, before that. Uh, and he just uh, he just kept kind of insisting really nicely, um, <laughs> and I, I I didn't have the heart to like you know <laughs> stick to my guns, uh, and and I'm really glad that I didn't because uh, he's he's been back three times now uh, and. He, he wrote this paper about uh, joglos and uh, tents and traditional Balinese structures versus something about the Dutch, which I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, take another shot. Um, and, then, uh, and then started talking about green school as well at the same time. And it, it really got my attention. And it's been a few years since I read it, but I really... Uh, something about it, and it was, it was that relationship between traditional architecture and kind of innovation, uh, and it really it really got me going with re-understanding what this mess we've created really is all about. Uh, so I'm really happy to have him back, and and we've like you know we kind of forced him to uh, give a talk, um, so everybody's instructed to smile. Uh, the whole time, uh, and I will be getting up with signs saying "clap" when it no, it's uh, no, no. I uh, we we so I am really excited uh, to have him speak and please welcome the his group. He has eleven kids, twelve students, eleven, eleven students. Not really kids anymore. One of them is my kid. One of them is uh, Robert's kid. Uh, you have to guess which one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they're in Robert's uh, architecture program at Wentworth University. Yes. Uh, so they will be moving in and out of our experience <laughs> as a larger group um, throughout the program. Okay, clap. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm not going to use the microphone, and I have to first figure out who you guys are. How many people are have some architectural training. Okay, how many of you have some engineering, okay, and some construction experience, and uh, what am I missing? What are you scuba diving experience. Design. Design, <laughs> oh, yep, design, scuba diving. Uh, so, uh, domestic, domestic engineer. Underwater basket weaving. <laughs> so literally. <laughs> so um, that'll help me gauge. Um, so chunks of this I've presented before, but a big part of it I've not. Um, I'm still wrapping my head around it, and I basically use the class that I teach at Wentworth. Wentworth has recently established, uh, been been granted university status in part because of our graduate program in the architecture pro uh, department. So we decided to keep its original name the way MIT did. Um, we are Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston, one of the largest architecture programs in the country, uh, and one of one of the largest, if not the largest, graduate program of architecture in the country. We're still trying to figure that out. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I originally uh, 
got tricked into thinking that we could take students to Bali in 2012, but it was all just a ruse. Um, but I came and I met John Hardy and um, talked about this kind of idea in 2012, but it wasn't until, was it 18, so until 2016 that we brought our first group here. And um, every day the students' minds were blown a little bit differently than the day before. And we just are so grateful for being able to offer this kind of experience to our students. Um, I lived in Indonesia, I lived in uh, Java during the 90s for four years, um, and this is part of what I'm presenting. I came with a three-month grant, and I uh, ended up connecting with, I, I didn't <coughs> even know that there was a palace, much less a palace with a royal family, uh, and 36 princes and princesses, and I became close friends with one of the princes, the one who ran the palace this vast complex of buildings that are, were collapsing and are still collapsing. But I became the royal architect for the King of Java, uh, and so I stayed for four years. And, um, uh, and it was really a wonderful experience, a wonderful introduction or uh, in immersion in Java. And during that time, I worked with the United Nations Development Program Project uh, to to work with village communities to try to find some way for villages in Bali to benefit from tourism. Uh, and so I kind of got immersed in Bali as well. Um, so a lot of this grows out of that. And um, so it's, it's called Bamboo Water Desi and Designing the Anthropocene. I guess I should have a remote, but I don't. You can be a remote boy. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. No, it would be an honor. Come on. <laughs> okay. So, Which button um, do I press? <laughs> um, so I teach the history of architecture, and um, I was invited uh, when my friend uh, who teaches the history of architecture at MIT, when he was taking a sabbatical, he said, hey, why don't, are you able to take, teach my class? And so I said, you betcha. And he said it's really demanding. You have to cover from uh, Egyptian architecture up to the Renaissance in only 24 lectures. It's really hard. And um, I was so excited, I did something really stupid. I said, I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to go from the caves 